Creating a vulnerability trend chart may not be that straightforward with Qualys data, but it's certainly doable. The trend chart that I'm showing here is based on data pulled via API, and it requires formatting of some existing date time columns, creating two custom measures, creating two custom columns, and the creation of a simple date table. If you're importing CSV vulnerability reports, there might be some minor changes to make, but the overall process should be the same. If you get value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is ensure that the first found and last found date time columns are formatted correctly and the data type is set to date. So if we go to our table view, we have our vulnerability data table selected and you can see first found, last found is not formatted correctly. So we're going to edit query and we're just going to add some additional steps Let me scroll over to the first found, last found. And I'm going to multi-select these by holding the control button. And we go to transform, replace values. And we're looking for the T. I'm going to replace it with a space. And we're going to replace values and put a Z, replace it with nothing. And lastly, we're going to extract the first 10 characters. And there we go. So I'll close and apply this. And we go back and look, here we go. We have now our normal year, month, day showing here. So now we can go to home and we're going to change the data type to date. And we're going to yes on that change. And we're going to change it to the two digit month and day, four digit year. And we do the same for last found. Okay, so now these are ready to be used in our measures. Next, I'm gonna create two new columns. One column will be to show a fixed state for a vulnerability because Qualys doesn't have a dedicated column for that. You have to look at the vulnerability status and the last found date to know when a fixed vulnerability was fixed. And the other column will be used to consolidate the vulnerability status to either active or fixed and this will make it easier to discern active versus fixed and not have to worry about what's new or reopened. It makes the formulas a little bit simpler. So I'll go to new column. I'll call this fixed date. And we're going to get the status equals fixed and we're going to take the last found and if not we're going to leave it blank and if we look at our filter here we can see now we have population here for fixed now you'll notice it gets the fixed date, but it's formatted incorrectly. So we're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to say, just become a date data type and change the format to be just like the other. Okay. Next we'll do another new column. And this will combine the active vuln types into a single active status plus the fixed. Okay. So we are going to say, status new, since we're sort of spinning off the current status column. Take status. Active new.
make those active. Take the status equals fixed. Make that fixed. Else. Make it blank. It looks like I went parentheses instead of a bracket. There we go. Here we are, active and fixed. And we can verify this if we just select active. If we scroll over to the status, you'll see we have new, we have active. They're all considered active in that new column. And if we select fixed, we should have a date here. And they'll show fixed over here as well. All right, next I'm going to create a date table. And this is a simple table with all the days that are in scope of the vulnerability data. And this is needed if you want to display active and fixed vulnerabilities on the same chart. With this table, you just simply do a measure to count how many active and fixed vulnerabilities fall on each day in the date table. And this table will be used for the X axis in the chart. So we're going to go to home, say new table. It's a pretty straightforward measure. We're going to call it date table. Calendar. And we're going to put in the beginning date of the calendar. You can adjust this however you like, uh, but make sure it encompasses all the dates for the vulnerability data that you have. So I'm using the beginning of September since I'm working with a small set of data that hasn't been around very long. And the end date will be today. And this way, it'll always be today. And it'll update automatically. And now we need to adjust the data type to just date. And we'll format to what we had chosen previously, which for me was the month, day, and four digit year. All right. Next, we're going to create two measures. The first measure. The first measure counts all the active vulnerabilities from the status new column by comparing the first found date and the date on the date table. This ensures we get a cumulative count of active vulnerabilities. Now I'm going to just copy and paste the formula in here. I'll make this available in the description below. And next we're going to create a measure that counts all the fixed vulnerabilities from the status new column by comparing the last found date time and the date from the date table. This also counts all the fixed vulnerabilities as active up until the day they were fixed. It doesn't do a cumulative count as we want to just show the day by day count of the fixed vulnerabilities. Again, I'm going to just copy and paste in the formula here. I'll make it available in the description. There we are. And now with all these pieces added, we can create the chart. So I'm going to do an area chart for this example here. The date table will be the X axis and we need to change it to a normal date, not the date hierarchy. And active phones count will be on the Y axis and the fixed phones count will also be on the Y axis. And you can see we've got a nice shape here. The reason why I like this is because the fixed vulnerabilities as they peak up, you should be able to see a valley come down for the active vulnerabilities. Assuming you don't have a bunch more active vulnerabilities getting introduced on that same day. This peaks up here, right? You'll see a drop here. And this one peaks up here. You'll see a drop here. So it makes it nice and clear as to the impact that your remediation efforts are having to the overall vulnerability counts. And then all we need to do from here is some visual cleanup. For the data labels, I like to make them a higher density.
And if you want to add a slider, if you're showing a longer period of data, maybe a longer trend, a slider is very helpful to have. Or let's say you want to just show the last 30 days. You can change the filtering on the date filter here to a relative date and just put in the last 30 days or the last 60 days or whatever you like. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have any other ideas or comments or recommendations, please throw them in the comments below. Thank you and cheers everybody.